In the US last year, we used almost as many barrels of oil as there are people on Earth, and given our current consumption, we may only have about 50 years left until the oil runs out. So, with everyone pushing for an electric future, what do those of us who can't afford an EV, or those of us who can't deal with their shortcomings do? Porsche has an answer for you. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico, and today I'll be shedding light on Porsche's latest project, a new way to power our old cars and still give you inner peace knowing that it won't harm the environment. But what is this new way to keep inner peace, you ask? Well, it's a little something Porsche calls e-fuel. E-fuel is a carbon neutral fuel which works exactly the same way gasoline does, in which it is mixed with oxygen and then ignited. And you could run your car on it now without having to modify anything. In fact, regular old gasoline and this e-fuel are made of the same components, hydrocarbons, which are molecules of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen all bonded together. And like gasoline, the energy of the fuel comes from breaking the bonds between the atoms when it is ignited. Before it's ignited though, it needs to be made, and this is where the difference between regular gasoline and e-fuel lies. Gasoline is refined from oil, which is just pumped from the ground, and e-fuel is made in a straightforward but still complex chemical process. In simple terms, the process goes as follows. Air is captured and carbon dioxide is filtered from the air and stored. Then raw water, not medium rare water, is zapped with electricity in a process called electrolysis, which splits apart the hydrogen and oxygen molecules in water. All of that is then mixed together, presumably there's a metal catalyst to help cause the reaction, producing something called synthetic methanol. From there it is refined in a magical process that is licensed and supported by ExxonMobil. And voila, e-fuel. To be honest, it sounds too good to be true, but unlike Dad saying he'll be back after getting milk from the grocery store, it's not a lie. Porsche has already made over 30,000 gallons of the stuff and tested it in the 2021 Porsche Mobile One Super Cup race series. All that science is sound. Porsche has already made this stuff and several brands including Mazda, Bentley, and McLaren have all said positive things about synthetic fuels. On top of that, some companies like Carbon Engineering are planning on making their own synthetic fuels, which they claim will cost about $4 per gallon, not bad compared to what we're seeing today. Carbon Engineering does use a slightly different process. Instead of using carbon dioxide, they use carbon monoxide, so carbon with one molecule of oxygen rather than two, but they still produce basically the same fuel as Porsche. But, and this is a Finding Nemo sized but, Porsche's e-fuel is by no means commercially available yet, and neither is Carbon Engineering's clean and green gasoline. Porsche is still working on getting more e-fuel plants, and even then likely won't be able to produce nearly as much fuel as the world currently consumes, and Carbon Engineering is in a similar position of not having the capacity to meet present demand. Porsche is aiming to produce 550 million liters of e-fuel per year by 2026, which for context is less than half the amount of gasoline the US consumed on average in 2021 every single day. In addition, the refining process is very different and oil refineries would have to replace their current technology, which is no easy task. In fact, back in 2012, some researchers from Princeton University projected it would likely take 30 to 40 years and over $1 trillion to retrofit all the US refineries. On the bright side, seeing as projected a decade ago, I would assume that retrofitting the refineries would now be cheaper and easier than it was back then. And as Porsche is working with Siemens Energy and with ExxonMobil, it is very likely that e-fuel will be mass produced. Also, considering Carbon Engineering's pursuit of a similar product only further cements my belief that this is a viable future, but still a future. So now we are playing the waiting game to see if Porsche's latest venture in conjunction with Siemens Energy and ExxonMobil will be fruitful, and to see if Canada's temporary pause from building snowmen will be proof that our gas guzzlers can stay on the road for many years to come. Comment below if you would prefer to have synthetic fuel or an EV and why. If you want to educate yourself further and want to see my sources, they are in the description. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.